I'm Martin Gray. I've been practicing and studying a variety of dance and athletic activities for over 40 years. Based on this experience, I've recognized that all human movements, from simple everyday actions to complex athletic and dance skills, are based upon five fundamental movement dynamics of coordination, flexibility, balance, endurance, and strength. The development of each of these movement dynamics is the key to complete physical conditioning. No single exercise, dance, or athletic activity, however, addresses all five of these movement dynamics in an efficient and balanced way. To answer this need, I developed a series of exercises that I call nomadics. Let me make a few important suggestions for your practice of the nomadics movements. The most important thing to know is that there is no absolutely correct way to do these movements. Every person has a different body and therefore will do the exercises in a slightly different way. One thing that distinguishes my method of teaching movement is that I do not ask my students to adapt their bodies to the movements, but rather encourage them to adapt the movements to their own bodies. I personally believe that many movement systems, particularly yoga and tai chi, are too formalized and rigid in their approach. By insisting that postures be performed in formalized ways, these methods prevent people from discovering their own natural movement style. The morning movements, while incorporating some yoga style postures, are not intended to be performed as deep stretching exercises. Rather, we are simply turning on and warming up all the different muscles and joints that our bodies will use during the day. What I am saying here is that it is not necessary to go to the limit of your range of flexibility in the postures of the morning movements. Simply go as far as is comfortable. Do not force any postures and do not do them rapidly or with jerking ballistic motions like you will find in many aerobics or Thai bow classes. Simply let each of the different movement patterns of the morning movements take you on a journey. Feel yourself doing each movement from the particular place in that movement that most stimulates your own attention. Then, while continuing to do the movement, place this most noticed area of sensation on automatic and let your awareness sweep over the rest of your body to feel what other parts are participating in the movement. Keeping the entire movement happening Find and feel all the other body parts making up the total movement. Another important matter is the pace or speed at which you practice and learn the nomadics movements. Here too, there is no prescribed or correct speed. In the beginning, I would suggest that you have a lot of patience with yourself and do the movements slowly and gently, taking the time to really explore and feel each posture and movement. As your familiarity with the movements increases, experiment with different paces of movement until you find what is best for your own body and psychology. Even this pace will change over time. The manner in which I personally practice the nomadics movements is to do the morning movements each morning for 20 minutes.
One of the primary focuses of the nomadic's exercises is the releasing or letting go of tensions held in our body's muscles and tissues. These tensions come from a variety of causes, including years of poor posture, limited range of movement in our daily lives, and emotional traumas stored in our body's tissues. The practice of releasing these tensions is begun by learning how to focus your attention or mental energy in a distinct part of your body in order to let go of the tension which you are holding there. This practice of focusing your conscious attention at distinct places in your body is of fundamental importance in the nomadic's method. This is much more than simple visualization, though it is a necessary first step. Stationing your attention means taking your concentration to a particular part of your body and feeling it deeply from the inside. This does not mean thinking about the knee, but physically moving your mental concentration from out of your head and into your actual knee. Another focus of the nomadic's method is the practice of traction. Using a variety of different movements and postures, we are able to create elongation or decompression at different joint structures and along muscle fascia groups. Hold the tip of one of your fingers and pull with a few pounds of force. You are putting traction on the joints of the pulled finger, allowing a subtle opening of the joints and a relaxation of the holding there. This method of releasing held tensions can be done for all the joints of the body, including the spine, through the nomadic's exercises. A common denominator in all human movement, be it tennis, rock climbing, or simple everyday actions, is that we are using our shoulders, hips, legs, arms, and other body parts. These moving body parts are fundamental to all the different physical actions we may do. In the nomadic's method, rather than concentrating on a particular piece of athletic equipment, we bring our attention directly to the body parts performing the action. We learn to feel and regulate the functioning of our hips, legs, and arms independent of them doing a particular sporting activity. This is called going to the roots or the fundamentals of movement. By focusing on the fundamentals, we will directly benefit the more complex movements such as sport and dance. In addition to their physical benefits, the nomadic's exercises also bring mental and spiritual effects. Research findings in the fields of somatic psychology and psychoneuroimmunology indicate that training the body for strength, flexibility, endurance, coordination, and balance simultaneously develops those same qualities in the mind. In other words, psychology may be accessed through physiology. Utilizing the nomadic's movement meditations, we can work on our minds by working on our bodies. I speak of nomadics as movement meditations in the sense 
that the different movements and postures are used to develop the mental capacity of focusing attention at precise places in your body, for example, in a certain muscle or organ. Once you learn this skill, you can then consciously influence what is happening in that muscle or organ. Once you are able to get inside the different parts of your body, then you can influence what is going on there. These other parts of your body are simply other parts of you. So what is being learned with the nomadics method is how to inhabit the other parts of your total being so that you can change things from the inside. It is important to recognize that our minds extend below our shoulders. The mind and the body are one. We do not have bodies, rather we are bodies. The focus of the nomadic's philosophy is to help people embody themselves rather than to disembody themselves. I do not encourage people to practice these exercises in order to free themselves from their own body, but instead to be more fully present in their bodies. We have incarnated as human beings in our bodies and as our bodies. It is not possible to understand either the soul, the mind, or the emotions without the body. The most important thing to remember in doing the nomadics exercises is that they are both physical exercises and equally important, they are meditation practices. Use the nomadics exercises to bring greater flexibility and strength to your body at the same time that you are developing greater awareness and concentration in your mind. The instruction I most often give to my students is that they feel what they are doing. It is not only important to do the movements, it is equally important to be fully present in your body while you are moving through the postures and forms. You will notice in watching these videos that I often have my eyes closed while doing the forms. I am doing this so that all my concentration is directed within, to feel what is happening in my body as I am doing the forms. I suggest that, once you have learned the basic order of the three forms, that you also practice the movements with your eyes closed. You will get the same quality of physical workout and you will also have a wonderful experience of meditation. In any posture or movement that we do in the nomadics exercises or in our lives in general, we may notice that there are several different component parts to the movements or postures. An interesting exercise is to develop the capacity to notice and feel all these multiple component parts at the same time. Once each of the component parts have been functionally accessed, 
they can be placed on automatic and one particular part can then be specifically focused upon. The next step is to learn to consciously accentuate or de-accentuate what is happening in that specific part while the other parts continue their actions on automatic. By practicing the nomadics exercises, you will learn to move from conscious choice rather than from unconscious habit. By becoming increasingly aware of when you revert to habitual patterns of movement, you can more often consciously direct yourself to ways of being. Once you are aware of yourself in movement, you can then come to any movement and endow it with your own imagination and sensitivities. When you begin to pay attention to yourself moving, you have begun the process of developing your kinesthetic or movement awareness sensibilities. You can do this as you drive, walk down a street, carry a load, or shake hands. Your total daily life thus becomes an opportunity for meditation and the expression of beauty. Each of the nomadic's forms can also be used as a technique to meditate upon certain qualities of being. While doing any of the movements or postures, it is useful to explore how different qualities are being actualized in the body-mind. Qualities to consider are softness, sense of flow, harmony, simplicity, beauty, impermanence, non-judgment, letting go of control, and patience.
In the next portion of the Nomadics video, I'll demonstrate the same Nomadics form that you have just seen. In this second demonstration, however, I'll do the form more slowly, while giving detailed instructions regarding each posture and movement within the form. shoulder, hip shape. This movement comes approximately 70% from the shoulders and 30% from the hips. Let your arms swing naturally forwards and backwards with their motion originating from the shoulders. While doing this exercise, concentrate on allowing the whole body to remain soft. shoulder crunches. Imagine the upper middle part of your chest as a hinge joint and that the shoulders simultaneously bend inward forward towards one another and then outward backwards towards one another. The arms hang loosely at the sides with elbows straight. The movement of the shoulders will translate down the arms resulting in their rotating motion. Lift straight arms alternately from sides of body upward until they are high above your head. First, reach higher to the sky with one hand, stretching the rib cage on that side, then repeat with the other side. Second, swing both arms slowly up and down in a wing-like motion, with the real focus of concentration being that the shoulders and chest are the source of the movement not the hands or the arms. Torso Twister. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart, feet parallel, 
and knees slightly bent and directly over your feet. With arms straight out to your sides, twist your torso on the axis of your spine. As you begin the exercise, first let the movement originating in the torso also twist the hips. Next, set up a twist in the hips that is opposite to that in the shoulders, so that when the torso turns to one side, the hips twist to the opposite. All the while, have a slight bounce going up and down in the knees as the body twists from one side to the other. Shoulder circles. There are eight different exercises in this group. With each exercise, the hands remain lightly held on the stomach, over the belly, and the fingers are lightly interlaced. The first exercise is both shoulders backwards simultaneously. The second exercise is both shoulders forwards simultaneously. The belly stays soft. The hands remained anchored on the belly. The third exercise is alternate backwards. The movement is originating out of the shoulders, not the elbows. The fourth exercise, the shoulders are going alternate forward. Again, the movement originates out of the shoulders, not the elbows. The elbows will be moved, but the shoulders are doing the movement. The fifth exercise is opposite simultaneous, with right shoulder going backwards and left going forward. The sixth exercise, opposite simultaneous, with left backwards and right forwards. The seventh exercise is opposite alternates, with right backwards, left forwards. exercise is still alternate opposite with left backwards and right forward. Again the hands stay anchored on the belly, the elbows don't do the movement, it's originating out of the shoulders. Head movements. There are five different exercises in the group. First is the primary motion is the head is turning side to side as it slowly goes up and down. The primary motion is the head is turning gently side to side, and the secondary motion is the head is going up and down. There's no snap to this, it's gentle. The second motion is the head is going up and down as the primary motion, and the secondary motion is it's going side to side as it is going up and down. is the head is bending side to side as it goes forwards and backwards. The primary motion is the head is bending side to side, and the secondary motion is it's going forwards and backwards at the same time. The whole rest of the body is relaxed, the belly is soft, the breathing is easy. The fourth motion are head circles. This motion appears to be the head going in a circle, but the movement actually comes from a focus of openness circling around the upper neck just below the skull, with the head always falling away from the place of openness on the neck. Do a number of circles in both directions. And as you're doing these circles, imagine that there's a string attached to the top of your head, gently pulling up, putting all your cervical vertebra in traction.
The fifth exercise in this group is head shifting. First of all, shift your head to the left and to the right. This is not a bending or a turning, but an actual shifting of the head side to side. And you could raise your arms up and it makes it easier to learn this. It's good to practice this in the mirror. Now we're shifting our heads forwards and backwards. Again, this is not a bending. And finally, we're shifting our head in a circle. First shifting in one direction, a number of circles, and then reversing the circles and doing four or five circles in the opposite direction. Body bow side bends. These exercises are done to both sides. Stand with your weight 80% on one leg, the other leg to the side, a shoulder width from the foundation leg with toes extended and 20% weight bearing. Bend your torso in the direction of the extended leg. Place the hand of that side on the upper outside thigh of the extended leg just below the hip. This is for support. Then bend further toward that side. Lift opposite arm above head from the side to create a long bow between the tip of hand and the foundation foot. The purpose of using the hand for support on the extended leg is so that the waist muscles are relaxed while they're being stretched. Forward bending. Place your hands on the front of your thighs and using this point of contact as a support, slide your hands down the front of your legs, over the knees and to the front of lower legs as you bend forward with the knees locked. Release any tightness in your stomach and just rest there for a moment. Next, slightly bend your left knee, place left elbow above the left knee, and the right hand just above right kneecap, gently pushing the right knee backwards. Extend the sitting bone of the right leg upwards towards the sky and feel the back of the right leg lengthen. The elbow resting on the knee is supporting the weight of the torso so the lower can relax and stretch. Repeat this procedure with the opposite leg. Lastly, bring hands back up fronts of the thighs to the middle of the thighs and using the thigh contact as a place of support, raise your torso up and down, bending at the lower back. This part of the movement comes from the back muscles but is still supported by the hands. Bent knee, forward bending pelvis swing. Stand with your feet shoulder width apart and interlace your fingers behind your back. Then, bending knees at the same time that you lean your torso forward, bring your hands and arms up behind your back and over your head. Release your stomach and then gently sway your hips side to side. Bent over, traction assisted, shoulder circles. Cross your left arm far over the right arm, wind your arms around one another and join your hands together. Then bend your torso forward and allowing gravity to pull down on the skeletal mass of the arms, thereby putting the shoulder joints in traction, draw large circles with the joined hands above the ground. First, do five circles in a clockwise direction, then five in a counterclockwise direction. Then, still bending forward, unwind and rewind your arms with the right arm now over the left arm and then do these circles in both directions as before. The belly is soft, the breathing is easy, the whole body is relaxed. Reach to sky. Stand up on your tiptoes five times, reaching to the sky with the hands lengthening your whole body. Hip circles. This motion comes out of the lower pelvis region, not the knees. Do 10 to 20 circles in both directions. The knees will appear to be doing the motion, but really they are just being moved by the action that is originating in the hips. 
Soften the belly, soften the chest. Rib cage circles. This motion comes from the lower part of the rib cage and is for many people the most difficult exercise in the morning movements to learn. In order to learn this exercise, it's helpful to first of all try to send your rib cage to the left or to the right. Once you have learned that, practice in circles. Do 10 to 20 circles in either direction, softening the belly and releasing the chest muscles. Hip, rib cage, and shoulder circles simultaneously. The hips and the chest circle in the same direction, but are always 180 degrees opposite from one another on the circle. The shoulders will automatically circle in alternate opposite directions as a result of the movement set up by the chest and hips. Do 10 to 15 circles in either direction. Circling body bows. This movement is somewhat similar to the hip circles practiced earlier, but here we're placing our body in the position of a bow and encircling our hips around the axis between our feet and our head. Do a number of circles in either direction, allowing the belly to be soft and the breathing to be easy. Reaching to sky, multiple circles. This exercise requires multiple simultaneous focuses of concentration. The hips are going in a circle, the lower rib cage, the shoulder girdle, both arms, the hands at the end of each arm, and the head. Do a number of circles in one direction and then reverse all of them simultaneously in doing circles in the opposite direction. Standing T with arm corkscrews. Stand with your arms extended straight out to your sides, pulling away from one another so that your shoulder joints are in traction. While extending hands away from one another, twist your hands, arms, and shoulders in opposite directions. Head shifts and hand movements. The head is shifting away from the upturning hand. Arms stay straight, parallel to ground, with the elbows locked. The head is shifting away from the upturning hand. Arm swings. There are 10 different exercises in this group. First, swinging your arms back and forth in front of you with the left arm over the right and then the right arm over the left. Second, the right arm is swinging forward, lifting with the shoulder, lifting with the chest, not only the hand and the elbow. Three, the left arm is swinging forward. The elbow is straight, not necessarily locked, and again, we're lifting with our shoulder and our chest and our whole body, not just as the hand swinging through space. Four, the right arm is now spinning backwards. The belly is soft, the breathing is easy, and notice there's a bounce in my knees. Five, the left arm goes backwards. And as the arm lifts up, the legs straighten, and as the arm drops down, the knees bend slightly, so the whole body is participating in this movement. Six, both arms swinging forward. 
The arms are 180 degrees opposite from one another. The chest is lifting up, the belly is soft. We're allowing our hips to sway side to side. The whole body is relaxed. Seven, both arms swinging backwards. Again, we're lifting with our hands in our chest, in our shoulders. And notice how the movement sends a movement down to the hips. Eight, the arms are going in opposite directions. As one arm lifts up in the front, the other arm lifts up in the back. As one arm drops down in the front, the other arm drops down in the back. Reversing the direction. Both arms are going in opposite directions. They're both coming up at the same time and down at the same time. Nine, simultaneous windmills in front of the body with the arms circling inward. First the left over the right and then the right over the left. 10. Alternate windmills in front of the body with the arms circling outward and the elbows soft, the hands relaxed. Triple movement exercise. We're doing three different things here. The hips are going forwards and backwards while the belly is soft and relaxed. The shoulders are pulling down and the arms are rotating. Notice what I'm doing with my hands. First of all, my fingers are arching backwards up towards my shoulders. As I'm pulling my shoulders down towards the ground and the head is turning side to side. Next, I change the position of my hands, but I keep my hips going backwards and forwards and my head going side to side at the same time. Knee weaving. Stand on one foot, raise the other knee and begin moving it back and forth in front of the standing leg. The knee leads and the foot follows. The lower leg is parallel to the ground as the knee goes back and forth. Keep the toes pointed. Now repeat the exercise on the other side. As we're doing the exercise, we're not doing anything with our hands, but a movement that is originating in our knee and our hip is traveling up our chest and down our arms and swinging our hands. But the concentration is on the knee going back and forth. Foot and leg circles. There are seven exercises in this group to be done on both sides of the body. Lift the knee high and begin making foot circles in both directions. Next, send the heel side to side. This movement is originating from the heel going side to side. The toes are following. Third movement is a pendulum of the lower leg and the foot. The knee is stationary and the lower leg and the foot are swinging around in a clockwise circle and then a counterclockwise circle. Four, foot and knee weaving. Similar to the knee weaving earlier, but this time the knee and the foot are participating in the exercise together and the toes are curled up. The knee is going side to side across the front of the body. Five, scissors. The leg swings side to side across the front of the body. The belly is soft. The breathing is easy. Six, hip swivels. The lower leg is parallel to the ground and the knee and the foot of the bent leg circle around the knee of the straight leg. Side knee lifts, lifting the knee up very high and pulling the foot back as the body bends slowly forward and the arm is extended. Now we do all of those exercises on the opposite side. 
Again, raising the knee high so the thigh is parallel to the ground and doing circles with the foot in either direction. The belly is soft, the breathing is easy, the hands are relaxed. The second exercise is the heel is again going side to side and the toe is following. And then the pendulums, the lower leg and the foot are swinging as a pendulum out of the knee and the thigh is again held high in the air. The foot in the knee weaving. The foot is curled up and the knee weaves side to side across the front of the body. scissors. The leg is again going side to side across the front of the body. Hip swivels. An image I suggest holding in your mind while doing this movement is that of holding a jar with one hand and with the other hand screwing the lid of the jar on and off, on and off, on and off. That is how your uplifted knee and foot spin or swivel around the other stationary leg side knee lift, lifting the knee up high and then pulling the foot backwards, maintaining your balance. Reverse leg splits, the left leg reaches far behind the right leg and to the side. And then we do hip circles in both the clockwise and the counterclockwise direction. one arm high up to the sky and the other down to the ground and reversing that. And then the right leg swings way behind the left leg. Again we do hip circles in both directions, clockwise and counterclockwise. And then raising the right arm up while the left arm pulls down and the left arm up while the right arm pulls down. Wide leg half squat. Squat bottom down between legs so that thighs become parallel to the ground. Place hands on knees with fingers curving over tops of knees, elbows locked with shoulders jutting up toward ears. Next bend torso far to the left and push against right knee with right hand while allowing bottom to sink. Switch sides. The weight of the torso is falling into one knee and the other arm is pushing the other knee away. We will repeat this exercise on both sides again, allowing the bottom to sink further towards the ground, the knees to spread farther apart, the belly to soften, and the breathing continuing to be natural. Spread leg bent over pelvis sway. Keep feet in same position as previous exercise. Straighten knees, bend torso forward, and place your hands on the floor one to two feet in front of your toes and six to 12 inches apart from each other. Then begin to sway the hips from side to side slowly. After five or 10 times of swaying the hips side to side, allow the hips to sink to one side the rib cage arches out and the torso falls in the opposite direction. Now the hips sway back in the other direction and rest there. The shoulder falls away from the direction of the hips and the rib cage arches out. The belly softens and the breathing is easy. Half split, half squat on toes. Squat down on right toes with bottom sitting on the heel of your right foot. Extend your left leg straight out to the side with toes pointing up. Have approximately 90 degrees of angle between your two. Switching over to the opposite side, we sit on our left heel and place our right elbow behind our right knee and allow the weight of our torso to fall through our right arm into our right leg.
switching over to the opposite side. This time, both feet are flat on the ground. Softening the belly, letting the breathing be easy. And again, switching to the other side, keeping the feet flat on the ground. Now switching back to the first position where we're sitting on our heel again, we allow the weight of our torso to fall towards our knee as we're pulling our sitting bone of the outstretched leg away from its heel, lengthening the back of its leg. Doing this on the right side, pulling the sitting bone away from the heel as we curl the toes back towards the head. The full squat, keeping our heels on the ground dropping our chest and our stomach towards the ground. Releasing the stomach and then rocking the hips side to side. Half squat, one leg back. From the full squat, first place your left hand on the floor in front of you for support. Then extend the left leg straight back behind so that the middle thigh, knee, and lower leg are laying on the floor. Now, straighten the left arm so that the wrist, elbow, and shoulder are in a perfect column like a flagpole. The right arm is resting on the right knee and the right foot is flat upon the ground. Switching to the other side, the left elbow comes up and rests on top of the left knee and the chest and the stomach of the right side are hanging off that right shoulder, sinking to the ground. Now we will repeat the exercise on the other side. And this time, after we get into position, we raise our right arm, and then we point our left toe up to our right hand. and switching to the other side. Again, there's the flagpole of our right arm so that our right stomach can sink to the ground. Our left arm raises up in the air and our right toe points to our left hand. Sitting shoulder stretch. Sit on bottom, let back sink, knees forward to head, Elbows are back and hands are pointing forward. Rocking the legs side to side. And lifting chest up and pulling shoulders back. And then rocking head side to side, lengthening the side of the neck. Deep knee bends. Come back to full squat. Place hands on thighs slightly above knees and using this as a support, slowly stand up and squat down five to 10 times, trying to keep your feet and your heels flat on the ground. Lower and middle back traction. Stand with feet shoulder width apart with legs straight and bend over at waist until your torso is parallel to ground with back straight. As you bend over, place the heel of each hand at the top of the thighs and then straighten your elbows. Your fingers are pointing down. Allow your spine to stretch, relax your stomach and lower back. Then, while still maintaining the spinal traction with your hands on thighs and elbows locked, Bend your knees slightly and begin to rock your pelvis forward and backwards, keeping the stomach muscles relaxed. Bent over torso hang. From previous position, bend forward and simply hang. Interlace your hands inside your elbows of opposite arms, drop your head forward, release your stomach, and hang for a minute or more. Allow your breathing to be as it will. Bent over, back of leg stretch. Alternately bend one knee forward, allowing the other hip to sink back. 
right knee forward, left hip back, left knee forward, right hip back. Next, keeping the knees straight, lift the heels and then the toes. Lift the heels and then the toes. Reach to sky, standing upward, lifting your entire body as high as you can in space, standing on your tiptoes, and this concludes the morning movements form.